Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim from Pitsco Education, and as you can see, I've got a new friend with me. Uh, this is Mr. Robot II. Uh, and for those of you that have uh, purchased him, I wanna take some time to go ahead and walk you through some things that you might wanna look out for as you assemble him. So we're gonna talk about some mechanical things that you need to look at, some set screws, some wiring, range of motion. We're gonna go through the pairing process, talk about some adjustment on some of the servos, some specific areas that uh, could be areas you wanna watch out for after a little bit of operation, things that might uh, loosen up over time, and then basically some just some general operation tips and tricks that will make this a good experience for you in your particular use. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So let's start by talking just mechanically. There's lots of moving parts and pieces on uh, Mr. Robot II. I'm gonna call him MR2, just so that we have a little bit easier for me to speak to him. But um, there are several things that you need to make sure that you uh, just look out for. Because there's so many pieces that move, we have range of motion that becomes a concern. And as you uh, go through your assembly process, you wanna make sure that you have a full range of motion. If you have something that is uh, glitching or hanging up at a certain point, that's not a good thing. So you wanna make stop right there and you actually wanna make sure what is causing the obstruction. You want things to move easily. You don't want there to be uh, rough spots. You want them to actually go ahead and uh, again, move smoothly full the, through the full range of motion. The other thing that you wanna watch for is uh, wiring. Uh, there are a lot of wires that go to different areas and they are connected to the extremities of Mr. Robot. So as my robot goes through the, the range of motion, we wanna make sure that our wires are not obstructing that and prohibiting going through the full range of motion or could possibly disconnect as it goes through the range of motion. So those are important parts to think about in your connections. Cable ties or your friends as you actually route the wires, making sure they're out of the uh, way of gears, those type of things. Those are areas that you wanna be concerned about as you go through and assemble Mr. Robot. Um, once you've gone through that, obviously you've got uh, screws and things that uh, you wanna make sure that they're tight. You don't wanna over tighten them, but you want them to be secure. The last thing you wanna have happen as you move or operate him around is you, want the, you don't want things falling off. So again, uh, final assembly, you wanna make sure that you go through just a general overlook, tighten everything down, make sure it's in place the way that you want it to be. So once we have all of those things uh, in place, we're ready to do final uh, adjustment on our servos and things, but before we do that, we have to pair uh, Mr. Robot, power him on and pair him with our controller. So let's go ahead and do that next. So let's go ahead and walk through the pairing process. I've got everything assembled. I've got my prism uh, connected to my um, robot. I have my teleop mounted. I have all of my wiring, my batteries, my power circuit is created. I'm ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and power him on with uh, my, my on off switch. I'll know that he's powered on because I have a blue indicator power light on my prism. I have a blue uh, power light on my teleop. His eyes have uh, come on, uh, I have power. So now I'm ready to go ahead and pair with my uh, Sony PlayStation uh, DualShock 4 controller. Now, um, it's a simple process. Uh, the first time that you do this, you do need to put your uh, controller into the discovery mode. But once you've paired the two devices, they will stay, stay paired and I'll show you what that looks like. But to put the device into a discovery mode for the pairing, it's a simple process. There's two buttons I need to press and hold at the same time. My PS4 button and the share button at the top. I'm gonna press those at the same time. I should hold them in until I get a flash of the white light on the light bar on my controller. Once I get this into that, uh, that rapid white uh, flash, I am ready to pair the two devices. On my teleapp module, there is a black button that I can simply press one time. It'll uh, momentarily flash red, then I'll get a solid green light on my teleapp, solid green light on the light bar of my controller. The two devices are paired. Uh, and again, it's a simple process once you've actually done that. I'm gonna power this off so you'll be able to see that this will power down by itself in about 10 seconds. That's typical operation. I don't have to worry about turning this off. It's gonna turn off by itself. 
But once it powers down, the repairing process is basically just seamless. I just have to power this on. So uh, again, when this powers down after 10 seconds, it should do that just uh, like it right there. The light goes out. It's ready to go through the process again. I can power this on. Look for my power lights. The green flashing light on my tele op, it's ready to go. I simply power on my controller and you can see that it immediately turned green as it made the pair. So I've got this in place now. Now I'm ready to actually start the program and make sure any adjustments that I need to do for my servos are done at this time so that they go to a neutral position that I'm happy with as I operate my robot. I'm gonna show you, I can move his head right now um, through the servo anywhere that I want to through the range of motion. But as soon as I start the program, it's gonna go back to the neutral position. Same way with his arms. The arms will go through the range of motion now, but as soon as I power him on, as from the program uh, perspective, he will go ahead and servos will move to the neutral position. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna press the green button on my prism. You'll see that the servos went to their neutral position. Now I'm ready to make any adjustments necessary to get him to a place where I'm happy with the way that they are in the neutral position. So let's do that now. So one of the areas of concern that uh, the servo adjustment is gonna be very important in is the shoulder joint. I have two servos that in order to cooperatively work together as they move around the joint. So they've got each one a gear and they are moving around or orbiting around a stationary gear on the, the side. The easy way to do that as far as to actually position these in the correct way, uh, a neutral position or change that neutral position is simply loosen this axle uh, hub right here uh, on the joint. I can loosen that and then I can back it over against the, uh, uh, the other side of the joint. I can carefully, and again, watch the bushings as you move this away, disengage from the gear. Uh, and you can see that now it freely rotates without rotating my servos power them on, they will go to the neutral position because of the program. Then I can position my arm where I want it to be in the range of motion from a neutral standpoint and then re-engage it onto the gear and then actually slide my axle hub back in place to hold it against the gear and then tighten that back up so that it stays in place. And that has then I've adjusted where the neutral position of that arm is going to hang naturally when the arm is not in motion. So that's a very first uh, an important joint that you need to make sure of when you actually adjust the servos the same way. You can also adjust where the, the elbow will uh, actually hang in the neutral position. Again, um, powered on, I can, uh, uh, disengage my uh, pivot arm on this side, slightly move it out and make an adjustment there. Uh, again, so that in the neutral position, it's where I want it to naturally hang. That is the same way. If I want that to be resting in a different position, I can disengage my gear, power my servo on, move it to the correct position, and then re-engage my gears. So that basically is an important aspect of um, adjusting and tweaking Mr. Robot the second so that it actually works the way that you want it to for your particular application. One of the other areas of major concern as you operate Mr. Robot the second over time is his feet. The feet were one of the areas of uh, major kind of redesign for him. And then there's some key points that you want to look at and keep an eye on as you operate him to make sure that he operates efficiently. And there are specifically four set screws that are part of the operation of the track belts that are important to keep an eye on. There's a set screw that is on the motor output shaft, a set screw on this bevel gear that engages that motor, and then the set screws on the sprocket. So those are important over time because if any one of those begins to slip, the belts will not drive and the feet will not actually operate correctly. So just a good idea over time, occasionally just come back through tighten those set screw, make sure they're uh, firmly in place so that, again, the feet will operate correctly. So I think we're ready uh, right now to go ahead and turn him back around and actually go through some general operation tips, exactly how he's gonna work with the program we've written for uh, the PS4 and the Prism and the Teleop. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna power him on. I'm gonna wait for all my power lights to come on, my green light to be uh, flashing on my Teleop. I'm gonna power on my uh, gamepad. Obviously, you see it went ahead and paired. 
I'm ready to go ahead and engage my program. Uh, start press my green button and he actually comes to life. He's ready to operate. Um, it's pretty simple. We actually gave him basically a tank style drive. In other words, as I operate the joysticks, I'm going to drive and control his feet. If I move my right joystick forward, his right foot is going to uh, engage. If I do the left uh, joystick, his left foot will engage. So I can move him backwards and forwards by engaging both together or I can cause him to turn. So that's the basic drive operation of uh, M uh, Mr. Robot the second. His arms will be engaged, and I'm going to move him forward just a little bit so that he don't, doesn't hit me. But his arms are engaged with the triggers on the PS4 controller. If I hold down the L1 trigger, uh, his arm will raise. If I hold down the L2 trigger, his arm will bend. So that will be basic operations of his left arm. Right arm is the same way. R1 raises my arm. R2 causes my arm to bend. So as I uh, engage those arms, I can actually make his arms be uh, move in the different directions depending on which button I press at any time. Uh, his head is on the uh, hat button on the controller. So if I press the left side, uh, his head will turn to the left. Press the right, his head will index to the right. If I press the center button, his head will come back to center. So that operates the head or the neck. Uh, the grippers on his arms, I'm going to actually bend his arm up so that you can see, are um, the square and the uh, zero or the O button, circle button on the controller. Square will cause the grippers to close, O or the zero button will cause the grippers to open. So that's the gripper operation. You can see that they were actually engaged together so that they will work together at the same time of the same button. So. That's the basic operation of how he will work with the program that we've written. The really nice thing is about because he's on the Prism platform and um, the uh, accessibility of the uh, Arduino IDE, if you wanted to modify that program, you could. We provide it so that it comes on the Prism uh, package from us, but you always can modify that program to actually customize the way uh, the Mr. Robot the second will work for you with your particular controller. So um, pretty simple. We hope you like that. We hope you enjoy putting him together and actually operating him uh, in your location. So like we always say, have fun, build some robots, come back and see us.